Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carbigato. Welcome to today. It is an amazing day. As you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. God is going to encourage and strengthen you. Amen. Oh my goodness, there is warfare right now, spiritual warfare, but it makes me excited. 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7 says, Be exceedingly glad when you experience fire, fiery trials and tribulations at the testing of your faith. Amen. Good morning, Dina. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a lifesaver broadcast. You're going to want to save it. Amen. Thank you, Dina. Hey, Lisa. God bless. Thank you for joining in. Oh my goodness. I don't know about you all. But if you are experiencing massive warfare, you need to be excited. There is going to be so much breakthrough to come at the time of Pentecost, which at the Jewish calendar this year, it's going to be June 11th. And so there is just massive warfare where the saints are in fiery trials and tribulations. It was this way last year as well. Right, Dina? Dina says yes. It was this way last year. Last year... Had it not been for the grace of God, I would have checked into a psych ward. It was so bad last year. And so if you feel like you are almost there, listen, this is the broadcast. It's going to really encourage you and strengthen you. There is just a massive attack of divination python operating, battling, hitting the saints. And it's because the enemy knows that breakthrough is just around the corner. And so he is just throwing around his ugly head. But greater is Jesus Christ in us, amen, than he that is in this world. If you haven't seen my prayer from yesterday, make sure you watch it because it is really powerful. It's all scriptures. I will just love scriptures, don't you? And so let me just get into a couple of things. I'm going to get into Genesis 32 today. God's going to bring in Jacob in relation to this warfare that's going on right now. And again, as in the time of Job, there's such a sifting. So it's really a constant pushing forward <clears throat> of taking your thoughts captive, bringing them down to the obedience of Christ Jesus, punishing those thoughts, as it says by Paul the Apostle in 2 Corinthians 10, 4-8, and just putting it under your feet and putting it under the submission of the word. We also see this with Romans 16, 20, that the peace of God will crush Satan under your feet shortly. And so that's what this broadcast is about. Yesterday, especially, it was yesterday morning. It was just a massive heaviness in and around the body of Christ. Jesus is what the Lord showed me. And it was that python spirit that was trying to suffocate the saints and you have to just keep pressing in and hold on to god's word we see this with the church of philadelphia and revelation 3 7 and 12 where philadelphia just has a little strength they're holding on to god's word they are just almost crawling but god tells them through jesus christ that all that you have a little strength, you've held on to my word and you've not denied my name, then I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews or not, I will cause them to bow down at your feet and acknowledge that I've loved, that I love you. And so that actually is representative of the attack of divination python coming against the church of Philadelphia. It is in the space of where you have to keep your eyes on Christ, knowing your image, who you are in Christ. And so I want to give you some practical applications that you'll be able to implement readily and you'll be able to just be mindful and a greater propensity through this season while we're going closer and closer and closer to Pentecost so that you can just immediately get the enemy under your feet, immediately shift in that transition of that attack like we're going to see with Jacob. And we're going to go to Genesis 32, and I'm going to bring this in as well as some things from the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Dis-Ease, that book that I'm writing. 
And the emphasis is to know who you are in Christ. To know that you are of a kingdom that is above. You're not of a kingdom that is of this world. As Jesus reveals in John, the gospel of John, because of Christ, we are no longer just born of flesh and blood, but we are born from above. Amen. And so I want to get into that first in John 1, and I'm going to start in verse 12 and read that. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, this is John 1, verse 12, the Amplified Classic. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, power, privilege, right to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in, adhere to, trust and rely on his name. Amen. Who owe their birth neither to bloods nor to the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, nor to the will of man, that of natural father, but to God they are born of God. And so we see in Colossians 3, 1 through 4, that we're to stay our minds on things above. We see in Colossians 1, 27, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so the emphasis that I'm going to bring to you today is about keeping your image in Christ. And that comes as we focus on things above, the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of God. And so I want to bring in Genesis 32 and bring in Jacob as an analogy. And so when we see Jacob, that represents born of the world. But when we see that transition and his name changes, that represents born from above. And this is that wrestling match that you're going through now. God gave me a vision of wrestling this massive python snake as I was doing a coaching call, God gave me a vision of my client wrestling this snake. And that is very much what's going on. It is python, it's divination, it's witchcraft and sorcery. And we see this against the Church of Philadelphia in relation to Revelation 3, 7 and 12, as God speaks to the church of Philadelphia of brotherly love and tells them, listen, you have but a little strength. You have held on to my name and you've not denied my name. You've not denied my word. You've held on to my word and you've not denied my name. So I'm going to cause those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not. I'm going to cause them to bow at your feet and acknowledge that I've loved you. And so this is a great distinctiveness of those that are operating with the attacks of the enemy coming against the church, those that are operating in the Python divination witchcraft spirit, because witchcraft is rebellion. Rebellion against God is witchcraft. People don't know that they're operating in it necessarily. They just find themselves being offensive against the saints of God. They find themselves not walking in the fruits of Holy Spirit. And so some of the things that are happening, as it did with the Church of Philadelphia in Revelation 3, 7, and 12, is that it is trying to wear out the saints. We see in Daniel 7, 25, that in the end days, that there will be changing of the laws, and it will be to wear out the saints. And again, I've done a note on that. And people think it's going to come outside of the church, that it's going to come from Congress, it's going to come in government. You have to get in your mind. The enemy is not going to wear you out outside of the church. The enemy has always done the same thing, and he has not changed. He is going to try to wear you out inside the church. And so again, the church is not a building, it's the people. So we have to guard our heart. We have to make sure that we're walking circumspect in prudence. Daniel 11 and uh, Daniel 12, 3, those that are wise and that shine like the stars will win many to righteousness. They will be teachers that will teach with prudence and circumspect. That is the emphasis for right now. So let's look at Daniel 12, 3, and I'm also going to get to eventually 
Genesis 32. Genesis 32, amen. Daniel 12, 3. And the teachers and those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness, to uprightness, and right standing with God shall give forth light like the stars forever and ever. And so this is important because you're going to see the distinctiveness of those that are in the church who say they're Christian, but they're of the world. They are not with their lamps all the way full, the wise virgins. They are those foolish virgins that have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. And that is the church of Laodicea. We think that it is not us. Saints, it is time to wake up. It is time to examine our hearts and to make sure that we're walking in prudence and being circumspect with the fruits of righteousness, John 15, 8, that glorify the Father. So, they are the fruits of Holy Spirit. You see in James 3, especially, the distinctiveness of that which is of this world where there's contention, there's jealousy, there's all kinds of strife, and there's bitterness. And then you see that which is peaceable, lovely, good, kind, courteous, and that is from above. And so the emphasis in this hour is, first and foremost, let me assess where I am with others. Amen. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not being attacked, as we're going to see with Genesis 32, where Jacob represents the image that is caught up in the trappings of the world based on Esau, and Esau fights against Jacob. And so that's distinctive of those that are caught up in the world who don't want to be set free. They are going to be of the trappings of the world, and because of the image in which they believe is defining them, if they're caught up in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, they are going to battle unknowingly, unconscious of it. They're going to battle those that are in the true worship of God in spirit and in truth. And again, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Ephesians 3 and Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 we're wrestling against these powers of darkness. And right now, the main principality of darkness is the python spirit. That is what you're battling. If over the last couple of days, especially yesterday, it was very intensified yesterday morning. If you have felt heaviness, if you have felt weighed down, like there was a ton of bricks on you, that is the python spirit. It's divination, it's witchcraft, and it's operative in the kingdom of the world. But again, greater is Jesus Christ in us. Amen. Say it. Greater is Jesus in me. Greater is Jesus in God's people than he that is in the world. Amen, Lisa. And so let's get to Genesis 32. And I want to give you some practical applications. So areas in which your image, and again, I teach in the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease, Chapter 1 is Eden. Paragraph 1, right out of the gate, God is having me tell the reader, listen, two things you need to keep in mind through this entire book, okay? Right out of the gate is image plus environment. Image plus environment is what is going to cause you to have the ref reflection of who you believe you are. Now, I know this seems like a mystery. It's abstract because it is truth. Truth is too big for earth. So it arrives on earth and in the abstract. And as I expound on it in chapter two, especially, and show you the literal physiology and physics and scripture of what's going on inside of your members as Holy Spirit shows you the truth of scripture. 
what is going on is that there is a battle over your image. That's the emphasis for today. There's a battle over your image. Hey, Erica. And so you have to keep your eyes on Christ Jesus. You have to keep your eyes on things above. And you have to realize, again, as I talked about in Mindfulness Amount of Christ, every stronghold is hypnosis. Hypnosis is the power of suggestion. And so you have to know scripture. You have to keep your eyes on things above. And you have to think well about how God sees you. Such as Ephesians 1, 3. You are accepted in the beloved. Ephesians 1, 3. And Ephesians 1, 6. Ephesians 2, 6. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. You are accepted in the beloved. You have to keep your emphasis on the love of God. Amen. So Genesis 32, verse 1, Amplified Classic. Then Jacob went on his way and God's angels met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's army. So he named the place Mahanaim to armies. Now let me clarify this, okay? Jacob sees two angelic armies. He meets angels, okay? But that does not change Jacob. Why? Because we see with Esau, his brother, his image, Jacob's image is tied up in that relationship that he has with his brother. And so Jacob sees himself in relation to he and his brother. And you have to get this in your knower. You are not who others think about you. You are not what other relationships are in this world. You are what the Word of God says about you. It is important to make sure that you're long-suffering, you're patient. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1-13 through 13 that you're keeping no record of wrong, you're believing the best about others, and that you're walking in these fruits of Holy Spirit so that you can shift in this space leading up to Pentecost. That is what this is about. It is about the shift of your image and that it is in Christ Jesus because like Peter, Luke 22, 31 there is a sifting like Job. There is a sifting. Hey, Amy. There is a sifting. And you have to keep your eyes on Christ Jesus. And you have to know who you are in God. Amen. And so Genesis 32. Jacob sees the armies. He calls the place Mahanaim. But it doesn't change Jacob. And then in verse Three, it says, And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. So Jacob does not change from seeing angelic armies. Why? Because it is an image issue. It is his image who Jacob believes, believes about himself. Now remember, the name Jacob actually means conniver, trickster, swindler. And so Jacob has this replay in his members of how bad he is, where the enemy is sifting him. And so the fear is not really about his brother. His brother is just a projection, a movie in who he thinks he is. And this is where you are now. You are in this movie, yes, Tracy, of who you think you are. And if it is not what Scripture says about you, if it is not what God says about you, then you are in this battle like Genesis 32. You're being sifted by the enemy. And so we see that here in relation to Esau, that there is an appeasing, and uh, 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 this appeasement is to send gifts. Let me do it this way, the world's way, and this is what you have to be mindful of in this hour. 
are you trying to please people? And it's not that they're thinking poorly about you. Are you thinking poorly about yourself that you're having to be almost suspicious and paranoid about yourself in relation to others? If that is how you are right now, that is the spirit of divination. It is attacking you. It is trying to get you paranoid to make you think that you're this horrible person. Genesis 32 is a great breakdown of the spirit of divination attacking God's people. But what is the purpose? Understand that there is no attack that God allows without a purpose. Okay? So this attack of divination is for a purpose. What is the purpose? To know who you are. To know who you are. Amen. And so let's get to this space in Genesis 32. And let's look at Jacob. And so where is what's going on? Now let's get specifically here to verse 21. Verse 21 Genesis 32, Amplified Classic, and understand that this is really what you're wrestling. When you're wrestling this spirit of Python, this spirit of divination, what you're really wrestling is who you think you are. And you've got to come out of this battle. you got to come out of this wrestling match, and you have to realize that you're wrestling with God's glory. And like I've taught on this, I'm going to try to put the message up from 2011, where it, he smears you that this wrestling match is God's glory smearing you and painting you. That's what anoint means, to smear and to paint. It is painting you into who God says you are, what he's called you to. Just like God called Jacob to be Israel, and Israel means power with God and man. Favor with God and man. Power with God and man. Jacob, know who you are. And so let's look at verse 21, Genesis 32, Amplified Classic. So the present went on before him, and he himself lodged that night in the camp. But he rose up that same night, took his two wives, two women servants, and his eleven sons, and passed over the ford of Jabbok. And he took them across the brook, and also he sent over all that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Now the scene shifts, and as you're wrestling the attacks of the enemy and what the enemy is saying about you, all of a sudden there's a shift, and you're coming into this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and wrestling in really who God's called you to be in this life. Interestingly enough, I saw the personalized plate yesterday, destined to win. Destined to win. When you understand that you were created for God's purpose, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, for a hope, for a plan that he has on this earth for you, you will understand that you're destined to win. Amen. And so here he's at the Jabalk. So what is sent over? Everything that could attach to his image, saints. Everything that uh, Jacob could say, oh, I did this. This is my family. This is all I have. This is, it's no, none of the things of this world define you. Get this in your knower in this hour. There is a shift here. And it is to reveal the things of this world that you have allowed to define you, to put you in places and positions that have limited God's destiny in your life. And this is the wrestling match that we find ourselves in right now. Jabbok, the place where Jacob wrestled, actually means to be emptied out. And so Jacob was emptying out Everything that defined him, the past issues, the past victories, the past battles. But the biggest thing was the fear. Fear of what? It was that ungodly fear, a fear of man. That is under the kingdom of the world. It is 
an enemy to the fear of God. That is why we have to be careful what we say in relation to conspiracy stuff. Isaiah 8, 11 through 15. Because it will cause people to have an ungodly fear. This is what the ten spies in Israel did when Joshua and Caleb had the report of God. The other ten spies had the report of fear. And so areas in which you have a poor self-esteem, God is bringing awareness in this hour so that you break out of that space and that you're not defined by things of the world but you're defined according to the word. Amen. And so verse 25, uh, verse 24, and Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled him. And when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh and Jacob's thigh was put out of joint as he wrestled him. Then he said, let me go for day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you declare a blessing on me. The man asked him, what is your name? And in shock of realization, whispering, he said, Jacob, supplanter, schemer, trickster, swindler. And he said, your name shall be called no more Jacob, supplanter, but Israel, contender with God. For you have contended and have power with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, tell me, I pray you, what in contrast is your name? But he said, why is that you ask my name? And the angel of God declared a blessing on Jacob there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, the face of God, saying, for I have seen God face to face and my life was spared and not snatched away. Now, saints, this is where we're going to end. And this is what you've got to get into your knower. You have to understand there is a battle right now. There is a sifting right now. There is a shifting right now. God is allowing it. The spirit of divination, Python, is operative and it's coming through circumstances of your past in your life that have tried to define you and call you everything else but what God has called you to. This is the hour that you're wrestling and you're overcoming. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. We wrestle not against pow flesh and blood. We're wrestling against these powers. You have to know who you are by the word. And so in this time, get in your knower. In the circumstances where you feel heaviness, where you feel weightiness. First and foremost, I always say, because God taught me this a long time ago, over two decades ago. When that attack, the first time I ever felt that python attack, and it's this heaviness, literally like a ton of bricks. It just, boom, sits on you. And I just take authority over it, and I say, in the name of Jesus, I take the sword of God's word, and I cut the cords of this python spirit, divination, and I command you to loose me, loose my family, loose these people, and go into the wilderness in Jesus' name, in the name of son, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I just pray the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, your household. The Spirit of the Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty in Jesus' name. And so I take authority over it. But at the same time, I recognize the real battle. The real battle is who I am. That is the real battle. It was the same for Peter in that time, in between Passover and Pentecost, he went through that battle. Right before Jesus ascended, Jesus restored Peter. But right at the time of the crucifixion and afterwards, Peter had that battle where the enemy was trying to tell Peter how bad he was. This is the battle. We are going to see such a dispersion of God's glory of God's power, of God positioning people, and you have to know the word. You have to know who you are in Christ Jesus. So acknowledge if you're feeling bad, thinking bad thoughts about yourself, recognize it's the battle. Take authority over it. Tread over serpents and scorpions. Use the keys of the kingdom of heaven. 
And then, saints of God, proclaim what the word says about you. You are accepted in the beloved. You're seated with Christ in heavenly places. You are the righteousness of Christ. God has a plan to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. Hey, Monica, God has such astounding benefits for his children that are in this word. Look at those benefits. Look at Psalm 103. I did that last week. And so recognize it's an image issue and immediately shift. Don't get in the ditch with the enemy and allow the accuser of the brethren to start accusing you, telling you how bad you are. Do not do that, saints of God. You have to keep your eyes on God. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we move forward, getting closer to Pentecost, and I'll come over here on tomorrow's broadcast and encourage you as well. Get it in your newer saints. Greater is Christ in you than he that is in this world. That God has such a plan of hope for you. That you are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. Everything you put your hands to, it prospers. Your storehouses are filled, saints. Don't look at your circumstances. Don't look at your past. Look at who you are in Christ. This word, amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.